society feeds us with a belief that a perfect life should look like one of these. A straight unruffled line or an upward line indicating continued unaltered success. But what they fail to tell us is that the reality of life looks nothing close to any of these images they have constructed. Perhaps at the end of my story, you may be able to recognize your own very life pattern in those lines no one ever likes to talk about, those twisted lines of imperfection. When I was eight years old, I had a dream. I wanted to become a philanthropist and to study in Europe. As a child, I was also taught that the greatest sense of worth a woman could have was to be married as a virgin. If you lose it, you lose your chance of getting the best husband one could have. Because marriage was the goal of every young girl, and I so desperately wanted to win this prize, I made a pledge to God to keep my virginity until I met the one. Little did I know that the weight of this pledge was going to trigger a series of events that would alter the course of my life. At the age of 17 years old, my enthusiasm was cut short when my innocence was forcefully taken away from me by armed men in my own father's house. They had broken into our home with guns in their hands asking for money. I could see the fury in their eyes and felt the anger in their voices that I thought they were going to shoot us. I was so frightened and I impulsively told them I had some money. That of course, all I had was a few Naira coins I was saving in a safe box. As I handed over the safe box to one of them, he immediately smashed it on the floor. And in that second, I could see the disappointment in his eyes when he saw how empty the box was. With anger, two of them dragged me towards the sitting room and their third colleague held my brothers and my parents hostage in the sleeping room. In that moment, my heart sank and the hair on my skin stood as a million questions flooded my mind. Could this be the end of it all? What would happen to the promise of a happy life I was told if these two succeeded in carrying out their plans, whatever their plans were? At this time, I knew that I was alone. I was helpless and there was no one coming to save me. I missed my cries and my pleas. I was pushed to the floor and one of them held my two hands and wrapped them between his two legs so that I wouldn't move. And without knowing it, he hit me repeatedly on my head with his heavy gun until my head was broken and bleeding. At this time, I was not only suffering from the pain of a broken head, but also at the horror staring me in the face. I would say the words, I would speak, yes, I was raped by two of them. Due to the culture of stigma in my society, I was warned to never say a word and that subject matter was never again discussed till today. Because of this psychological trauma, Somehow, I could no longer relate to men in my environment. So I decided to focus my entire energy on the one thing that mattered the most to me, my dream to study and live in Europe. I thought maybe I could leave my past behind and have a fresh chance at life again. I thought maybe, just maybe, I could be happy again. 
At this same time, it became very clear to me that my parents could not afford to sponsor my dream to study and live in Europe. So I would spend the following years watching every American movie I could find, while at the same time listening to foreign news. I wanted to experience what it felt like to speak like them. I would also imagine walking on their streets and going to university with them. At the same time, my dream to become a philanthropist never let me. It never left me. So I formed a group of young people. We were, you know, we came together to help underprivileged children in my community. We raised funds to pay school fees for some of them. We raised funds to pay school fees for some of them, provided educational material and food support. I was doing all these things alongside my bachelor's and successfully completed my bachelor's with high grades. Soon after, I began sending several applications for sponsorship for my postgraduate studies in Europe, from Commonwealth to Erasmus Mundus, to name but a few, but none was successful. But two years later, I met a European man who made me feel safe and wanted in a different way. So I trusted him. He had wanted me to come over to Germany to get married and to start a family. Now, while that sounded beautiful, not just because I met a man who made me feel secure for the very first time, but also I could see the reality of my eight-year-old dream coming to fruition before my very own eyes. Well, you guess what happened? I quickly started looking for universities and shortly after, I got my admission to study in Germany. So began my journey across continents, sitting on that Lufthansa airline on the 6th of September, 2014. For the very first time out of Africa, leaving my home and my family behind to start a new life in a completely different environment with a man that claimed that he loved me and promised to take care of me. How wrong was I? How short-lived that moment of bliss was. Little did I know it was going to be a long ride, a journey into the unknown. It was just a little over a year into this bliss that he visited without warning or quarrel whatsoever. And looking me in the eyes, he said, I met someone else. And just like that, the man whom I trusted that brought me to Europe disappeared. He stopped every financial support and vanished, never to be seen again till today. What was all that perfect love about, I asked. Was it all an illusion? What was I going to do in a foreign land with no family and friends and money? Well, the fairy tale had ended and the cycle of suffering began. For two years, I became increasingly depressed and over time sank further into despair. One day, while in deep anguish, I reached out to a knife lying there on the, sitting sink, on, on the kitchen sink as if it was calling me to pick it up. Well, I picked it up. As I raised it to push into my abdomen, I thought, perhaps, let me call a neighbor that was living three floors above me to hear what she had to say, perhaps not to do it. Well, she was home. She rushed down and stayed with me, so I didn't do it. But whatever she said was not enough to stop the voice in my head that kept on singing, do it. End it. You came all the way from Africa to achieve your dream. Your dream is dead. End it all. Well, I attempted a second and a third time. On the third time, while walking on a busy road, lost in my thought, as if being pulled by an unknown force into the sea of fast-moving vehicles to end my life. As I was about to step my feet into the sea of fast-moving vehicles, something happened. I remembered my eight-year-old dream. The power of my dream pulled my feet from ending my life, and I went back home. And that night, I made a promise to myself. I said, I will not die. I am going to leave to share my story. So I took several odd jobs, you could name it, and then worked so hard, completed my studies, 
in biomedical sciences. Finally, my dream was realized. I had finally achieved my dream to study in Europe. Actually, I got high distinctions, the highest German grade, 1.0, in my master thesis in cancer research. Thank you. With this new excitement and exuberance, I thought it was going to be easy to get a job. Unbeknownst to me, I was about to enter into another cycle of frustration. I had applied to every job you could think of. At some point, I thought that something was wrong with me. So I said, perhaps let me go to a kindergarten and offer them my help to take care of the children for free. I wanted to feel like a human being. But even that, I was rejected. I was told by the teachers, you are not qualified to take care of children, not even for free. After getting over 150 job rejections in a few months, and on the verge of becoming homeless because I could not afford to pay rent, so I was asking friends and people and strangers to live with them for a few weeks so I was moving from one place to another. At the same time, I got a letter from the foreign office telling me that I had four weeks to get a job in my field or face the risk of deportation to Africa. While all these things were happening, and in what seemed to be a magical encounter, I reconnected with a dear friend, whom I now call my sister. She mentioned this job to me and encouraged me to apply. I applied, and a few weeks later, I got the job. And I am humbled to say that I am currently working in one of the leading telecommunication companies in Europe. From a cultural perspective, I failed to meet the mark, the morally acceptable standard of perfection. After 18 years of living in deep-seated shame and guilt, I am now breaking the silence for the very first time. Why is that? Because through this story, I wish to reveal the following lessons. Number one, I want to create an awareness on the cultural silencing of the African woman. According to UNICEF in Nigeria, one in every four girls is raped before age 18. More than 10,000 girls are raped daily, for me, I believe. These statistics in Nigeria and in Africa as a whole are in no way a true representation of rape incidents. Many times, the women are forbidden to speak, so they keep mute. I dare tell you, underrepresented and minority women crave protection. The girl child craves protection. Women all over crave protection. It doesn't matter whether, where the woman comes from, whether she comes from Africa, Asia, Europe, or the States. It does not matter the size, the shape, or the form of the woman. It does not matter the color of the woman, whether she is black, white, purple, or green. Every woman is looking for protection. I call on the men in this audience and any man listening to me. It is time for you to unite and stand against every form of abuse against women. Today. Today, on this platform, I stand and speak on behalf of every woman around the world. And with one voice we say, rape is not fun. Rape is not a game, and most certainly, rape is not our culture. It cannot be. It cannot be. It cannot be. Number two, you are infinite worth. As a child, I was told, that my sexuality determined my worthiness. My brain interpreted that to mean that being a virgin meant being worthy to be called a woman. But while that was lost by no choice of mine, I believed I was doomed and worthless. But now I know that it was all lies. My sexuality does not determine my worthiness. I am infinite worth. And to you here, it doesn't matter what you've been told. You are infinite worth, and this truth is unassailable. Number three, 
I want to encourage you to be imperfect in a world that is constantly striving for perfection. Throw away the maps of perfection given to you by society. You have carried this heavy burden for so long. When are you going to drop it and let yourself free? Listen to me. I have come to realize, I have come to realize that when you accept your shame, you know what happens? You begin to approve of it. Once you begin to approve, approve of it, you become transformed by it. When, when you begin to own your shame and make friends with your brokenness, it loses its power over you. Number four, I love this one. Love will heal you. Did someone break your heart? Did someone promise to love you but then abandoned you? Did someone betray you? Listen to me, baby. This heart cannot be broken. Your heart cannot be broken. Love will heal the pain. Did you hear me? Love will cure the pain. I'm not talking about the love from someone or from something else. I am speaking of the love that you are. Do you not know that your DNA is made of love? For so many months, I buried myself in motivational videos and books, trying to find a cure for my aching heart. Until one day, I cried out to the love on the inside of me. And this love saved me. Love will heal you. They say that time heals all wounds. Permit me to disagree. Love heals all wounds. Love will heal your heart. Number five. Give meaning to your suffering and watch it dissolve. The reason that the pain, your pain still hurts is because you are yet to give it a meaning. Do you not know that your hard times are your best times in disguise? Listen, your pain, your pain is where your gift is buried. The reason that you have suffered was because it was a necessary step for the evolution of your consciousness. Listen to me. Your wound is where the light gets in. Your woundedness is a portal for enlightenment. And wherever you have suffered the most is where you can contribute the greatest. Finally, my friends, I declare to you today a mystery. There is a universal force within you. Use it. It's in you when all hope was lost and I had nothing left for me to hold on to. I reached deep down on the inside of me and the power within me pulled me out from the ashes of darkness. Today, I stand before you as that eight-year-old girl from the western part of Africa with a dream to study and live in Europe. And I tell you, I am not my story. I know who I am. The question is, do you know who you are? Now have a look at this. Isn't this a beautiful piece of art? This has been the journey of my life until now. I have learned to accept my scars and my shame, my rough edges and all. As a matter of fact, I now wear them as a badge of honor. Will you accept yours? May you find the courage today to be perfect in your imperfections. Thank you. Thank you.